Hello everybody, uh, tonight we're going to look at <clears throat> some of the most important maps uh, that I've ever seen and certainly this is perhaps uh, one of the most detailed studies on the internet um, about rivers and soil. So if you're looking to study uh, food or water on the planet, um, this is definitely for you. Um, we're going to look at the entire planet, uh, believe it or not. Um, it may take a little bit of time. Uh, to diagram everything out. Um, but basically, here is the overall map. Um, what I personally discovered was that uh, essentially the soil map was really vital to understand how the river map also works. Um, so you basically need to look at both the soil and the water map to really have a full understanding of what's going on, as well as population maps. Um, we do have a little bit of the population map linked in on some of these uh some of these here oh wow this is not good it actually messed up my whole thing yeah, that's not good well anyway um but basically we're gonna go around the world um here is for africa um here's north africa we're gonna look at europe <clears throat> we're gonna look at india and asia uh as well as parts of the middle east uh we're gonna look at the far east basically china um and we're gonna discover all this flood plain um, which is very unusual on the planet. Most of Oceania um, is actually very complicated. Uh, it actually takes a very detailed study, um, but as you can see, uh, Sumatra and Borneo will be a big part of that discussion there. Um, and then we're going to kind of compare. So we basically have Oceania with the Caribbean, and we want to kind of look at what's going on um, in a comparative study as well as Central America is a huge one uh, for farming, particularly in the winter. Uh, and then a big surprise is really Australia. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with the river system in Australia, it actually heads down towards Melbourne um, and is actually quite significant in the north as well as on the Perth side. Um, and there's a bunch of smaller rivers uh, kind of on the east coast, um, similar to the United States. Um, so there's basically going to be a lot of different maps that we're going to look at tonight. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it kind of messed up my United States map. Um, but uh, thank God I have another, another copy of it. So we'll kind of look through everything here. I'm going to pause this. I'm also trying to cook some dinner. Um, but basically, uh, this is the full map of all the river systems around the planet. Now, uh, what I would mention to you is that I actually... Uh, turned off all the smaller rivers because it just becomes so difficult to see what's going on. So this particular map, because it's looking at the entire Earth, I wanted to kind of show that uh, as best I could. And there's also opacity judgments calls. So I don't know how your screen display is as you're watching this, but there's opacity as well. So you can kind of turn this up and down. Um, but it's hard, as you can see, to see some of the rivers uh, depending on how you change those maps. Um, and basically the detailed map is this one, um, and you actually have to zoom in quite a bit to see everything. So uh, it's interesting that it closed my discussion here. Um, but I just want to pan around this so you can pause uh, if you do live on any of these places. Uh, you can see Africa is very centered in the center here. Um, and then uh, Southeast Asia and India is also extremely complicated, particularly on the China side. Um, but really what's really most striking <clears throat> at least for me, because I grew up in the United States, um, is what's going on uh, particularly in <clears throat> uh, Europe. So that's a big discussion. And then also in Russia, it's so complicated um, that it basically cut off a lot of the river systems here. Um, but we can still kind of trace it down because we have some of the soil maps in the far north so we can kind of see uh, where these big major rivers are. Um, that uh, are a big surprise. So that's a huge one to look at as well as all in Canada. So it's really hard to also see there because they actually cut off some of the river system for some reason they weren't able to map that out um, on the map. Um, but we're going to probably start in the United States um, and then maybe go over to Europe um, and then go over to Asia and then do Africa, South America, Caribbean, and Oceania. So that's kind of a huge quest for tonight um, if you think about it um, but when you take a step back what you're going to learn tonight is going to be absolutely amazing um, and this is kind of the second time or third time that I've done a full earth study and it's been very helpful every single time to look at everything so I'll be right back I'm trying to cook some dinner hopefully you won't mind as I do this thanks a lot
Hello everybody, so I'm back. Um, it's been really fun to cook here, um, so it's really been fun to work on this. Um, it's kind of scary because um, I might be one of the very first people on the planet really to discover and work on this. Um, so many people are so busy <clears throat> with their daily lives. Uh, it's Sunday today, so it's Sunday evening, so I have a little bit extra time um, <clears throat> to help out and look at what's going on globally. Um, but basically, there's nothing really comprehensive on YouTube uh, like what we're about to do. So you should be really uh, amazed and happy uh, about this work that we're about to do here. Um, it's basically some of the first ever done in history. So these maps, um, I mean, if you think about it, 10 years ago, we didn't have this kind of mapping available at all. I mean, we did, but we didn't. So it wasn't publicly available. It wasn't something you could just watch in your free time and work on. So uh, there's really a lot that we're gonna do here. Um, <coughs> and basically, uh, it's really an amazing amount of work um, tonight. So I just wanted to thank everybody. If you'd like to work on any of this with me, um, if you're looking for work projects around the world, um, what I'd recommend is helping studying these rivers really matters a lot, right? You're going to notice that seaports, uh, whether you're talking about San Francisco, New Orleans, New York, um, down in South America, Buenos Aires, um, Nigeria, Lagos, all these major cities really depend on Shanghai in particular um, and Mumbai um, and then also Calcutta and Bangladesh. All these cities really have a major London, for instance, um, uh, you know, uh, you need water to survive. So when you go back thousands of years, uh, these rivers have been around. And that's the other big point that I wanted to make <clears throat> as we do this study, uh, that this is stuff that you're going to learn that's going to be valuable like when your kids, 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 this is 100 years, things are not, the Mississippi River is going to be around for a while. So, um, and all these major rivers, Congo, Amazon, um, everything that we study tonight is going to be helpful for a while. So what you're learning and what you're working on with me tonight is pretty amazing. Now, I published all the images. So if you wanted to just download them, you could look at the images here um, or you can just take a screenshot as we're working on this. Here's the global population image. So I wanted to kind of compare that um, for what we're trying to do. So as we look at India and China, that's going to be particularly important as well as different parts of Europe and the eastern United States as well as northern part of South America and Central America. So and then Africa, you can kind of see, use this population to guide you to understand which rivers and human populations are most important. Um, it's kind of hard to see that, but we're going to maybe try to look at that a little bit on these other maps. I'm going to go check out my food really quick. And hopefully you can do some other things while we're doing this. So don't worry um, if you can't grasp everything that we're talking about tonight. Um, take a break, walk around, get some exercise. We got a lot of stuff to do here. Um, understanding water and food on our planet is a primary basis for everything, for all the work that everyone's doing. No matter where you're, what kind of work you're doing, it really starts with water and food. So let's get started. Give me a second to work on my dinner here as well. Thanks a lot. So hello everybody, I got some great spices in my dinner tonight, so hopefully that will be very enlightening and fun as we go around the world and study this together. Um, so I'm from the United States, up here in the Pacific Northwest, um, and I would tell you a couple things because I grew up near the Mississippi River uh, in Chicago, um, and there's some very weird things going on that I had no idea. Um, you know, I thought I knew my own country. But when you really start studying these river systems, you'll see that things are very different than what you think. So, first of all, um, <clears throat> the rivers are very different out west in the mountains as they are in the plains. So you'll have many different types of rivers. You'll kind of have three different types. You'll have coastal rivers, inland rivers, and then mountain rivers. Um, and then there's also other kinds of rivers too. But basically, we're going to outline a couple of these key areas so you can kind of see uh, what's going on. So look at this river, first of all. The Mississippi River is ginormous, right? You basically have that in the United States. Um, and then there's some kind of surprising rivers, um, right? So I'm going to do this river here. Um, this is a kind of a surprise, right? And then you kind of have this one going down uh, to the edge of the country, right? And then you have this river here, 
uh, which I really should do in a different color. Um, and then you have all these coastal rivers, and I want to put these in a different color here so you can see what's going on, right? And then there's even this weird uh, possibility where you have the Great Lakes kind of emptying up here. So that's essentially what's going on for the United States. Um, and I would say it's really surprising. Like you have these desert rivers, right, which really come in through the mountains, uh, the uh, Rocky Mountains. Um, and then you have this whole weird thing out west. The thing that really surprised me, the rivers seem bigger out west because of the mountains. But actually, the rivers are bigger inland here. Um, there's just so much more um, land area. Um, so even though this river actually probably looks longer um, than the Amazon, the Amazon is like three times or four times more. Um, and that's basically because the mountains are larger. It's also near the equator. So let's go diagram South America. Uh, I'm a little bit familiar with South America because I've studied these rivers many different times. Um, so there's actually, I'm going to do three red rivers here to kind of highlight what's really going on. It's really surprising. So uh, there's actually <clears throat> this uh, other river up in Venezuela that drains out that way. Um, and then they got all these coastal rivers similar to like what we have in the United States, but it's actually quite flatter along the coast we actually have quite significant Appalachian Mountains are pretty big here whereas you don't really have the Appalachian Mountains it's really not very hilly on this side of South America at all um, in Brazil um, and then there's actually another one that I want to do green uh, just because these are kind of surprisers down here right you have that whole area there um, and we're gonna have to zoom in uh, we're going to zoom into Central America to really start to see what's going on there. Uh, but let's first zoom back into North America so we can kind of see. I think I'm not going to diagram this one out and leave it clean so you can have a clean picture of everything. Um, but basically, uh, you could see some weird stuff going on, right? This is that one channel heading out into Mexico. And then you have this other one going all the way down this, to this tip of of Texas where they actually have the SpaceX launch facility. I was really surprised. It's like right on the border uh, between Mexico and the United States. I'm going to pause this again and check a look at my um, food really quick. Take a look at this. Take a look at the rest of this map and see how you might diagram this out while we're waiting. Kind of visualize it and take a look at what you'd think about. You'll probably be particularly surprised in Europe like as you diagram this out. Look at this stuff in here. It's actually very strange. Um, as well as in Africa, you'll see a weird part down there. But anyway, I'll be right back. Uh, take a look at this map carefully. Uh, I'll be right back. So before we go on too far there, because I am eating tonight, um, why we do this, I was really surprised. You know, Did you know that if everyone was a vegetarian on the planet, we could remove 70% of the farmland? That really shocked me a lot. Um, I was just totally surprised at how much farmland we could save. So I'm going to highlight Africa first because it's just so interesting what's going on in Africa all right and the Congo is no joke it's the second uh, busiest river in terms of water flow and then this river is super interesting I have a couple friends out in Timbuktu believe it or not nowadays way out in this region and hopefully he's watching and looking at this but it's so amazing when you start to study this Right, so Lagos is, Lagos, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing things wrong, is way down here, and yet the river starts way over here. Um, and then there's some kind of like weird rivers here. Um, there's actually a whole lake system uh, similar to the Great Lakes, and I want to outline that in blue um, because it doesn't really show up on the map, um, but it's huge, right? It's like this huge lake system right in there, which is similar to the Great Lakes, there's only two places on the planet, right? We basically have this Great Lakes. And this really doesn't empty anywhere. It actually goes north. Um, it's kind of a weird pathway. It's not even super certain whether or not... Um, I got a friend in Jinja, Uganda, and that's supposedly where... So what I've been trying to do is make friends... After studying these, I oftentimes make friends with people around the world uh, in different interesting parts uh, as I study this. So... Uh, but 
yeah, there's so many cool things. And then there's also this whole another one down in here that's also, we could probably even do a yellow color. It's kind of deserty down in here. Um, but there's that there as well as the, <laughs> there's also these over here. So there's just so much uh, to really diagram out. So let's dive into the details there in Africa and see. So this is a far more detailed diagram. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little hungry as I work on this. Um, but it just shows you the extent of the complexity here, right? And it's so not clear which direction things are going. And because I don't live in Africa, I'm going to diagram this out. Um, because it helps me a little bit understand. So what's going on here, right? So you basically have these weird areas like this kind of coming out through here, which is the Congo jungle, right? And once you see, um, it may help to actually put an aquifer here. Let me show you the aquifer map so you can start to understand how this works. So on this map, uh, you can go to explore more, and I may even already have it on here, major aquifers. No, I don't. Um, so I'm going to add the aquifer, hydrological basins, major hydro. It's underwater here, so if you're trying to do this on your own, this will show you the aquifer maps. So it's actually super helpful to see this because now you can start to see that this major river system actually goes deep into the desert, and there's actually a point here which is kind of a mountainous region so each one of these are major aquifers and believe it or not there's minor aquifers that makes this extremely complicated this map so i'm going to leave that on just because it helps to see and then bring this over back over to africa so really in this image i only covered most of the southern part of africa but i'm going to pull it up later and we can look at the northern part oh man it's really struggling on the uh, server side but on the northern part of Africa, it's really strange because this the Nile River is just the only thing, right? It's a major, major river, and there's nothing in here. So it's all desert, with the exception of up in here, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. Anyway, I'll be right back. I'm trying to stir my food. I don't want to... Uh, I'll maybe bring some food here in a moment. I think it still needs another ten, five or ten minutes. All right, so starting to taste pretty good there on the food side. So let's go back here and see if we can add the aquifer map. So interestingly enough, um, you can see it says Democratic Republic Congo. I'm actually going to take off all the country boundaries um, because it's a little bit, if you're, if you're really looking at the beauty of the maps, you kind of don't want to have place labels and all that. You want to kind of focus on just the pure um, image the uh, water and hydrological basin. So I'm going to add that major hydrological basins. And you'll see in a second just why I did that. So it's really hard to see, unfortunately, what it did here. But you can kind of get a gist. So this outline here kind of shows that here. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. But if you kind of take the shape here, you'll start to see that, oh, yeah, all this river back into here flows into here. This flows into here. And then it's actually an entirely different picture on the south side. So there's actually quite a big um, feat of water coming through here. So let's make sure that we got that marked up on our main diagram. So actually, that one's a super important river, right? So this one right here, it goes way, way back. So there's almost two sides of the jungle, right? This is probably the Mozambique side and i'm sorry if i diagram that a little bit off um it's super hard to see without the aquifers and i maybe even should redo this whole thing uh, for aquifers but um now similar as the united states we also have this whole smaller river system basically heading right off of La lagos right so there's all these smaller rivers and there's actually even some lakes in here um, that are really beautiful, but you can see um, I have some friends that might be watching from Nigeria and they're probably laughing at me, but it's so interesting in Nigeria because it's a major delta up here. So this area probably should be marked totally differently. Um, it's kind of like the edge and it actually goes all the way back over to there, right? So there's this area here and Lagos is actually on the western side of that. So it's actually kind of the Delta region, and if you look at the population maps, you'll see there's some super interesting stuff going on there. Um, and then probably we should mark this in blue as well. 
um, because we have all these little rivers and it's and this would be really important stuff right in here um, there's only some separate countries even and this is all separate from the Congo um, and then just the raw complexity of everything now this all goes out this part here um, actually heads out into the Nile River right so that's pretty weird stuff because that's all going north going that way and so uh, and then just the complexity I just love how complex all this river stuff is near the Great Lakes so you have this lake here this lake here another lake here another lake there and then you got Lake Victoria so it is no joke how awesomely complex and interesting it is in here so I would say this stuff right here for wildlife is super critical um, and I've gone through and diagrammed very detailed in what's going on. It's hard to even, it's just taking a step back from the image. It's just a wow moment because think about the trillions and trillions of creatures that live right along the edge of the jungle here. And then just even more so in the Congo. Um, and then we'll probably go back and have to diagram this out for... Brazil as well, so it's just totally um, kind of different picture. Um, maybe we should do that next. I'm gonna have to pause this for a moment just because I'm kind of still in wow. Um, but let's look at Brazil carefully, see what you can see here. Um, notice the swamp areas here, and you can kind of start to see some of that swamp. I didn't, it's so hard to see because the rivers are very complicated in that region. So it's really important to look at this soil map, but it's really evident on why the Amazon is a little bit bigger because of the swamp zones in here. And it's actually super important to protect these swamp areas here as well. Um, a lot of people wouldn't appreciate it enough. And perhaps that's where the river needs to be cleanest because it's also the start. This river goes all the way down to Argentina. So super important stuff right in here in the terms of the biomes. But anyway, I'll be right back. I'm gonna check on my food. Um, I had to add a little bit of sugar actually to my food and a little more spice, but thanks a lot. I'll be right back. All right, food's starting to taste absolutely delicious. Probably get some funny scene here where I'm eating some food. and But at the same time, I wanted to really thank my friends that always remind me how important food is. Now, this map, man, I really should have included the, uh, the um, aquifer maps. Um, let me... Let me jump back um, just to the main map so you can see why that aquifer map is super important. Oh, I see what happened. Hmm. So, one of these, this has aquifers on it, I believe, but basically looking for the aquifer map here. Sorry about this. Oh, looks like I skipped it. Interesting. So, what I did on these maps, Maybe this will help clarify. Some people want to know 2D maps versus 3D. I actually love the 3D maps, and I used to do the 3D terrain. And then that converts the earth to a 3D surface. And then I make this high quality down here. So if you're wondering how did I get exactly get these maps, that may help. Um, it takes a little while to load up, so while we're waiting here, I'm going to add the aqua first because it looks like... Looks like it added country boundaries, which I don't want. And place labels. We know where Brazil is, hopefully. And sorry about this. This does take quite a significant amount of time to graph and map everything, but major hydrological basins of the world. So that's what we want to do differently on this map. So that kind of highlights it. And you can see that just filled it in there a little bit better. Um, and I had to put it there was two ways to do this map. Um, I hit, I hold my control key down and then you can tilt the earth different directions. The reason I did this direction is because the water primarily flows this direction out of the Andes. There are some little rivers going on that side, um, but because the Andes are all on this coast, um, basically the rivers will be primarily on this side. So a little bit easier to see. And then I'll zoom in here and close this down. So. Uh, it would be really nice to grab this um, again and relook at it. 
Um, as it loads, you're gonna see the rivers kind of shrink a little bit because it's on the high quality mode. So it actually does help to do it under low quality sometimes because the rivers become bigger. Um, but for the sake of diagramming, sometimes it's really nice to see all the fine details, uh, particularly if you're working on a project. So like I said, I've been making friends with people all over the world using some of these maps and data. So you're probably pretty surprised um, and it's really fun to get to know people like everyone out there. There's some really interesting people out there um, who have been really fun to get to know, and I'm really thankful. So um, anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some food. This might take me a little bit more of a moment. Thanks, guys. Okay, so I really pray that you also have some food tonight. Um, I'll just show you a little bit of what I'm eating. Kind of see it's kind of smoking up a little bit there, um, but it's got some lentils, some green bean, green split peas, and potatoes, and then a variety of really complicated spices. Um, so that's one thing that I'm cooking. And then I'm also cooking one other thing. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is a little more spicy. I added a little bit more hot spices. Now, uh, one of my favorite beans is uh, this uh, yellow split peas, or actually they have the red split peas too. So I have some red split peas with um, some purple onions and tomatoes. Um, this turns out to be kind of an Indian dish. Um, they have this as kind of a curry usually. The beans will kind of ferment and then eventually become like a curry paste. And I've been having a lot of fun making that as well. So let me just taste it here. Mmm. Wow, absolutely delicious. But we need to continue on with this discussion. So, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to need some water because it's a little bit spicy, but let's diagram this out. Um, so, remember on our original diagram, we already kind of looked at South America. Remember that was that northern part, central part, this part, here and here. So, we're going to see <clears throat> some of that same characteristics, although it's split this time in much more detail. <clears throat> so, Let's start with the Amazon, and you can kind of see there's definitely different branches of the Amazon here, and it actually is very complicated right in here, so you have to be careful as you draw that, as well as this side can be very complicated, because it actually goes pretty far south, and I will kind of watch this before, and this is really tricky part, because there's actually two, there's actually this river that comes in through here, and I'm going to split those off just because it's super important to realize how important that river is. And we're gonna actually do it slightly different than the diagram that we already did. So this river is actually super important and I'm gonna put it as a blue river. Um, I probably shouldn't do it as a blue river, but there's all of this right in here. And there's actually a big city called Belém, uh, Brazil right in here and there's a bunch of other cities all along here So this city this river system becomes vital as well as this guy here, so I should pretty much I want to pretty much circle these guys Right in here. Oh Man, I don't know how I'm gonna do this uh, Let's do it as yellow So these yellow guys here We basically have really important dirt right in here right and because we can kind of know that because we see this being super important to the center of the jungle, right? It's like a swamp, right? And that goes all the way around uh, to uh, their main city right in here, uh, Manaus. Um, so that kind of changes the perspective a little bit. Um, now we still have all of that blue stuff along here like we looked at on the map. But now we're gonna see that there's actually a separate river. So it actually, the diagram doesn't really explain it, but there's this river right through here. And on this side of the river in particular, it comes in right through there. So that's a very important river to know about. And I'm gonna make it look a little bit more clean and we're actually gonna do it like this and put it like that. So there's actually slight differences when you look at the details. And even on this main river in south part, um, it's actually super important. Look at this, there's another section that goes right through here and then branches all the way through here. But then look at this guy 
just like what we got here. I'm gonna put this one as green. This might be one of the most urban rivers because this starts almost in Sao Paulo. Um, and you got a separate one that kind of drains right through there. And then as we noticed, there was that, you can actually see the importance of these blue light blue channels. And you see that there's biodiversity here because there's soil. So because there's different types of soil, um, it's also climate. So it's important to look at the climate map too. So that really changes our perspective a little bit of South America and particularly of these other rivers. And actually I drew this wrong here, right? I probably should have drawn this right up there because there's another, these two, there's actually two separate channels that had different ways and kind of converged, but not even on the same delta. Well, it's kind of the same delta, but they're different rivers. Um, so that would be an interesting part of South America. Um, so actually, to me, this is pretty understandable. And we really should look at Central America and even up into here in Colombia. There's actually really complicated river um, heading out into the Caribbean. And I would say Colombia and Venezuela, this is a separate river channel here. Um, I'm going to pause this and eat a little bit, but take a look at the global map a little bit. Let's diagram. Uh, next, we're going to diagram. I think we should just go straight to Asia because there's so many more people. I know that a lot of my friends are still in Europe, um, but I'm starting to make friends in India and China as well as Southeast Asia. So we're going to take a look at that and then Australia. But we'll jump straight to Asia because there's basically half the world's population is in that region. So I've diagrammed India many times. Um, so maybe I should just jump in and look at China. Um, but I'll just give you some tips on India really quickly. Um, so there are some things that don't exactly make sense <clears throat> about India. Um, one of those is Pakistan um, and that's basically the Indus River. Funny thing is they call it the Indus River, which almost sounds like India River, and yet it's Pakistan. Other interesting thing about rivers here is it actually goes around the back side here. The Ganges River <clears throat> actually has a separate channel that actually comes through here and then down there. Delete that there. But so there's a weird, let's call it Assam, India. <clears throat> but then there's a whole separate section here. Now, the interesting thing is that the wildlife <clears throat> in India has actually been pushed primarily to the west coast of India. So it's basically right along here and Sri Lanka. <clears throat> and actually Sri Lanka is a red because it's really vital as an island. <clears throat> so that should explain most of what's going on in India. Now there are some really complicated things happening in this Delta region as well as up near Mumbai <clears throat> and, and this whole peninsula uh, Gujarat in this area um, but if you understand those main regions <clears throat> that can help you get really started in understanding what's going on in India and hopefully that gives you a clear picture a lot of people don't realize about even in India how important this Assam India area is heading around the backside so like I said there's kind of like a river loop there um, so next we're going to jump in and study the amazing Yangtze River as well as Yellow River and Pearl River. Um, give me a moment here. Pause. So we're back again. Um, so we've already made huge progress. Um, we've studied one, two, three continents already. So don't get worried. There's actually so much here to study. I'm trying a coconut popsicle. One of my favorite. So we're going to get into the Oceania and maybe where coconut came from. Just a moment. So the Yangtze River is one of the coolest rivers on the planet. I would say um, it's amazing. Uh, it ends in Shanghai. It goes all the way through here and starts over here. So that is the Yangtze River. The Yellow River is a super strange river. And it basically goes right past the capital. It's part of a separate floodplain. But if I'm drawing this correctly... You can see they're right almost on top of each other. There's a third and even fourth major river. And actually this river, there's so much farmland, half of India's, excuse me, China's farmland 
is actually goes up into here, into this section. This is Korea. So this is like North Korea. This is north of North Korea. Completely um, interesting part of China. And it really helps you understand all of China. And you start to see this. Now, there's some really interesting stuff going on because the Pearl River is actually a pretty small river, but it's like the Columbia River out west. Sorry, I didn't do the same color, but uh, it's a little bit different because there's all these other sub rivers kind of coming off here, the coastline, right, in China. Now, um, that is not to explain even how important the Mekong River is, right? So there's this deep river that heads right in here, and there's so many red rivers here because there's such high population of people. And there's even another river right here, a Yang it goes past Yangon. And it's super hard to see. Maybe if I zoomed in, uh, it's a little bit hard to see. So we're gonna have to zoom in and look at these in detail, but in a moment, You'll see. And it's not that any one of these red or blues are more important or less important. It actually is totally different because these green areas actually dump small amounts of water into the, into the coast, but it's actually getting very close to Southeast Asia. And this is where the fish primarily live. So as you get further and further south, these rivers, although they're smaller, they actually become more vital because even a little particle Imagine if you had a little piece of dirt in your popsicle or whatever you're trying to eat. You would get sick from it. Like when you're thinking about trillions of gallons of water, I don't even know how much water there is, but there's a lot of water being dumped into the ocean and the fish have to eat that stuff oftentimes. So that's basically how the water gets cleaned. It is a circle of life where the pollution is dumped into the water and the fish end up eating it. And then people get fit, sick from the fish. So that is pretty much how that works there. Let's zoom in on the detailed map. Let me say this. I wish I could have drawn it differently, um, but <clears throat> let's look at India first and I'll just highlight some of those details that we already talked about. So again, the big river most people in India actually live in the north. So it's really, you might wonder, well, why do they live in the north? Well, it's because of the river system, right? So you basically have this whole river system like that, right? <clears throat> and then you have this whole river system in Pakistan all the way over here called the Indus River. And I still think it's so funny. They should have called this the Indus River because I mean, it's India, but that's the way history is. Now, Actually, there's so much vitalness along this whole coast, right? So I would say India should be flipped because actually all the river systems are actually on the East Coast. And yet what really happened here is the only wildlife left is actually up in the mountains. But you can kind of see the dirt here. There's some dirt right along the coast here. And you see that also in the Amazon jungle. You probably remember that brownish dirt. So that's maybe one reason why... It's super important to remember that as we go around the river, right? So you see this brown stuff. We also saw that here <clears throat> in India. Um, and then this whole floodplain. If you know anything about India, Gandhi is actually from this area. I'm going to keep it yellow because it's actually kind of deserty. But there's this whole peninsula that's starting to become super important because of Mumbai. So yes, most people in India live up here. Now, if you look at the population map, look at that population, right? We just looked at, this is like the, the most populated area in the world. It's no doubt that rivers are connected to population. If that doesn't convince you, um, we'll have to keep finding some other interesting ideas here, but essentially that's India, right? And we didn't even get started on Myanmar, right? So here, Remember, we marked those off. I'm going to mark these as blue because it's 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 just so different. These actually go really far up in the Himalayas, and because I cut it off there, I mean, this may go. There's actually slight little river channels 
like that, they go very deep. And one of the examples of that is the Mekong River. And it actually goes so unbelievably deep. It's crazy. It's like really far in. So I don't know if I'm even drawing that right. So there's actually another one in Bangkok that doesn't go as far. So Cambodia and Laos are back in here and it's super important. I was looking at some of the towns just yesterday in Cambodia and it looks super cool. They have like these really fancy cities right along the rivers. And it's kind of sad because Vietnam took most of the land here, coastal land, so these guys are all landlocked, except for Cambodia, but Laos is definitely landlocked. And so the river is owned by several different countries, making it complicated, um, but also helping with peace process because they know that they definitely have to work together. So the water basically comes all the way up from China um, and eventually ends out here in Ho Chi Minh City, um, which is basically Saigon and uh, Vietnam. So that tells you a little bit about that. We didn't even really get into <clears throat> the stuff here, but the Yangtze River, this is Shanghai out here, right? So this guy, it's just so hard to diagram it because it's so, it goes as deep. And you can see that's part of the river there. And look at this, like, so there's actually a separate guy right there. And this is all super important. And there's actually a slight separate river system right there. So I hope I diagram that correctly. But if you look at the uh, aquifer map, you'll also see some of the same stuff. Anyway, we've been talking for 40 minutes. But you and I are becoming experts about the entire river system for the entire planet. So you'll see some patterns here. We kind of looked at that and that. I think I did this blue. I mean, I could redo these as blue um, to make it look kind of consistent across those maps. But it's just I wanted to emphasize how important these guys are basically because it's close to the Oceana, particularly Mekong River. Um, and it's just colder as you get north, and it dumps kind of differently. This will go several hundred miles out into the ocean. I could probably even show you on a live map. Let me pause this. Okay, so I found a spot. This is on a live map from today, October 6th. And you kind of see, this is actually 50 miles is like this. That's 100, maybe 150 miles out. And this is not even one of the biggest rivers that we've looked at. This goes through Yangon and Myanmar. So basically, we're just looking at that river right there. Um, and it could really depend on the day so I don't know like all these maps sometimes they show it going in, like in Thailand it can go 50 miles 100 miles out sometimes and particularly in Shanghai <clears throat> it's kind of covered up by clouds right now so you can't really see um, but it will extend quite far as well as the Yellow River up in here um, you can kind of see it here maybe this is kind of the time of day um, but some of that debris coming off and it, you can see it's actually this is maybe even a couple hundred miles. So uh, Shanghai is something really to watch out for because it's just such a populated area um, that it really should be watched very carefully in Shanghai as well as in Egypt. Um, it's another one. And then Louisiana is a big area as well. Um, but it's dark right now. So maybe we can pick... Hmm, maybe we'll do this. Let's go back to... 12 noon. Let's see if we can look at Louisiana um, and see some of that Delta stuff. So it's going to be dark all the way here. So we'll have to go to the other side of the planet. Sorry about this. It's taking a little while to do this and it's loading kind of slowly, but hopefully we can see what goes on in this Delta. So most of this is actually floodplain. This is all, I mean, this is all, it should be. I mean, it's like when the hurricane comes in through here, it devastates everything. New Orleans is right here, but the Mississippi River basically goes right by it right now. But at some time, because of the hundreds of years or thousands of years this has been emptying, <clears throat> all this is basically <clears throat> floodplain um, from the Mississippi River. Uh, but you can see that this is probably debris here, so 
you can see that that's there, but it doesn't really show us clearly. And some of that might be just difficult to see. And you can see all on the coast <clears throat> here that goes out for at least 100 miles onto the ocean. So you don't really get the clean water anywhere along the coast. And you don't even have the Mississippi River here. So this may actually even be spill off, partly just draining down the coast um, from the Mississippi River. You can see the, the wind is kind of pushing this and the waves could push it all the way along the coast. <clears throat> and you basically have that down here too. So, sorry, that was more of a pollution conversation um, to look at, but I've been looking at that for years um, and it is a complicated topic uh, to look at. And definitely I would say Shanghai is at the peak of what we need to study and comparing that to Louisiana, um, it's vital. So like basically this river right here, because you have all this human population and farm waste, basically this is the America's farmland uh, heading right down to Louisiana and comparing and working together between Louisiana and Shanghai is super important. As well as Bangladesh. So Bangladesh unfortunately has to deal with all the problems. I think I can spill my food. I gotta turn off the heaters. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. So wow, uh, we've been recording for about an hour now. This is a pretty extensive conversation, uh, but like I said, this is gonna be valuable for the next while. Um, so everything that we learned tonight, you don't have to relearn. It's just this way for the future. Um, and it'll be very valuable to talk about. Um, I'm not going to be able to get into the Middle East too much, but we're going to look at this Tigris and Euphrates that basically joins right here. Um, and <clears throat> uh, definitely, if you're interested in more details, this is a very geopolitical area because the water basically starts in China, ends up in Russia. Super interesting kind of discussions in that area. So um, let's get started uh, in Ukraine since that's a pretty hot topic. Actually, that's one of the most important rivers in all of Europe. Um, and then you have the Orb and the rivers that go through Moscow is actually no big, is actually a huge deal as well. You can look at the size of that. Look at the size of that thing. And that's nothing compared to even on the North Pole. So um, but look at how Europe does this, right? So it's actually quite biased. The flow is actually towards the east, um, with the exception of a couple guys in here, right? So now we have these guys kind of on the coast here, like we see in America. And then we saw all these guys here, right? Um, and then more coastal stuff right in here. And it's actually a red river in here because the population of Europe is so important. So I'm going to put, because people think about it, um, and then we'll put green for the rest of these guys um, because the population kind of thins out as you get further north and east into Eastern Europe. So the head population is really right in here. So if you looked at this population map, the reason I diagram those as red is because that's basically as heavy or even more heavily populated than the United States East Coast um, when you look at the vast expanse of that. Um, and we probably should have looked at that more carefully um, down in Africa uh, when we had a chance there. But um, but basically, this is a full <coughs> picture of the planet, right? Um, <coughs> and we only got really one or two more places to diagram, which is basically <coughs> Central America and basically down here in Australia. Australia has this big river that basically empties almost just north of Melbourne, and that's about it. Um, and then there's basically all this coastal stuff. This is a very important, so it's not like, just because this river is bigger, this actually empties in the north side, and they actually get a lot of lightning over here, um, and just a whole lot of other things to think about. Um, and then there's all this coastal stuff right along here as well as this little guy right in here we shouldn't forget about him this actually just drains into the middle of the desert and kind of should be a lake of some sort so <clears throat> i've already kind of studied that a little bit and perhaps the world's most important rivers are going to be right here so um this guy right here and basically this guy right here um as well as this whole footprint I'm going to put it in blue because it will make it a little bit more obvious. 
that that was something interesting going on there. So, um, and then not to mention, wow, I can't even believe I didn't. Papua New Guinea, yeah. So there's this whole island of Papua New Guinea here. So as you can see, all of this should be red, but we're really looking at different places for the entire planet. So let me just zoom out so we can look at the whole picture. <clears throat> see what we've accomplished in understanding everything here. So we just spent about an hour, um, but you are now one of the experts on the planet, believe it or not. There's very few people that have gone through this whole entire discussion. Let me look at my chat um, just to see who's looking at the conversations really quick to see if we got some questions and some people online that may be interested. Um, I'm gonna pause it. If you have some questions, um, some other ideas, um, I'll try to answer any questions you have. So I see a bunch of people online right now. Mostly my friends out here in the West Coast. I see my aunt, some other family members, some various people. A good friend in Africa, and a bunch of other people here in the local town. Um, so it's kind of a little embarrassing to talk about this, but reason we need to talk about this is that it's so important, right? Making friends with people all around the world, um, understanding how we're connected via these river systems is vital um, to the farmland. So I have people asking me for money, for food. <clears throat> Sometimes they're just showing me like they can't even get water. And this is really part of that discussion to try to help out even a little bit. Um, we just spent about an hour discussing everything. Hopefully this has become one of the most valuable <clears throat> conversations you've ever had about the water system. Um, so we diagram this, we diagram South America, diagram Africa. Didn't really get into Europe too much on the details there. <clears throat> um, we did look at the high level image. This is pretty much everything detailed for Asia. <clears throat> and then I didn't really diagram this one too well, but <clears throat> I turned the image and you can see the Yangtze River, kind of the structure of it, right? So it's it's almost to say, <clears throat> um, it's really important not to say one river is more important than the other. Let me show you the example here. So this guy, wow, right? It's going all the way out to there, going out to here, around here. Oh my gosh, Yangtze, right? Um, and then look at what goes on here. It goes way back here, even off the page. And just, just, a, it's just huge. But look at the difference here between the Yellow River. They've actually done a lot of damming. And it's actually, the floodplain is actually even made this almost an island, right? So we have kind of an interesting, I'm going to turn that there. And China has done an excellent job because they farm this whole entire region now, right? So the Yellow River, look at what happens. It's such a weird architecture. It doesn't go nearly as deep. Um, but look at that right there, right? So <clears throat> that should tell you quite a bit. And we didn't even get started on that whole other river area up there, right? So let me save this as an image. I'm going to save these images later so you can see. But that, we, this was the Yellow River that we looked at and the Yangtze, which goes really further. We didn't even diagram out Pearl River or those coastal stuff, and look at the size of that guy up there, right? So on that map, we didn't even get started on what this river means over in this region and how it goes a totally different direction than what you may think. And I'm gonna do the Pearl River a little bit different because look at the population. You can see this orange stuff here. Um, this is all from Shanghai. Um, so it's no joke that there's serious population questions right along here. And it is a smaller river, but it's really staggering. It's, this is one of the most beautiful rivers on the planet um, by far. So I would say it's, it's, it's like the Columbia River. So if you've ever seen it in the United States, they got <coughs> 3,000 foot canyons. And remember, as you get into the Yangtze River, it gets even more beautiful as you get farther into the Himalayas. And I would say right in this region, right in here in particular, you'll see some really cool stuff going on and just because of the mountains. So these are three 30,000 foot mountains um, going up into there. And I'm not gonna do the same color as the other map, but we're gonna try to do it as a green. Um, and it's just, it's no joke how important all this stuff is. 
right? And there's basically this whole river system, small rivers, and these islands too. So there's a lot of fish that like to live right along there. So that was pretty fun to diagram out that one for China. Um, so if you're not familiar with China, um, definitely this will get you started. And I wanted to leave a little bit of this in here so we could see the importance of this guy. I just left this on the map. And look at how deep it goes. And it's just, it, it doesn't even show it on the map, but it actually goes really far back there. Um, it's like a sliver of the river. It's one of the coolest rivers to study, actually. And look at how that goes there. So that pretty much concludes the Far East, um, at least the major big rivers, except we didn't really have a chance to look at that one carefully. And I'd really like to do that, but the population isn't as big up in that region, so we're gonna skip it um, because this stuff is super important. So I'm not gonna diagram this out like I did the other ones, I just because the importance of Borneo and Sumatra, and I'm just gonna leave it at that um, and let you think about it for a while. Um, I've already done a lot of work on this, um, and then we're gonna do a blue one here around Sulawesi Island. So, and it's just hard to say, it's hard to appreciate all the diagrams I've already done on this, um, and then just. This is gonna be red because it's just, it's out of control important, um, how, how important Papua New Guinea is in the water spectrum area. So I would say, <clears throat> you know, I got friends in the Philippines and I got just new friends that I've been making in Indonesia. Even last week I've been talking with people <clears throat> in Indonesia and they're super fun and cool um, and just awesome people uh, as well as Singapore and just cool stuff going on, but uh, what I would say is that the water stuff is super important there. So sorry if this has gone super long. Maybe you're kind of like, whoa, this is like a huge topic, and obviously we're talking about the entire planet, so you just spent uh, some time to help focus on what we can do. Um, and then Central America, um, the Caribbean, um, it's really hard to say without looking at the, there's not a whole lot of rivers, right? So. Basically what happens here is that it really is important to look at that guy uh, right in there as well as looking at what's going on in Mexico. So basically there's all this stuff right in here, right? And then we got kind of this whole branch of rivers coming all the way down here from Texas and, and I didn't even draw the diagram right. So uh, let's just undo that so it's actually like this right so it goes further out um, there so um, and then there's a separate section right in here and just a whole lot of other smaller rivers coming off the coast here so I did include on this map if you look carefully at it you'll see the aquifers so this is like an aquifer line so it's not actually a river line on there so you might get a little bit confused doing this and then certainly uh down here uh we already diagrammed this this is this part here but there's actually this whole separate area here that i was wanting to talk about including colombia and their river system uh, but it's basically super critical on there and even in cuba i got a friend in cuba now and um, basically it's really strange because uh, there's not a whole lot of rivers in Cuba, and that's because it's almost a swamp, right? It's only a few feet above the water in some places, and there's not a whole lot of mountains at all, like there is in Puerto Rico or in Haiti and Dominican Republic, or even Jamaica has more mountains than all of Cuba. So uh, it's just interesting to look at in what's going on there. So let's go back to the big picture before we close this conversation out. Um, we didn't really diagram the United States, but again, we kind of diagrammed it here. Um, you can feel free to go back and diagram that in detail. You'll see, yeah, there's kind of some different sections um, from off from the Mississippi that we didn't look at. And South America was actually turned out to be very important because we discovered the swampland areas and how that is a very critical habitat. Africa, as you remember, was super complicated. And we didn't even diagram Europe. Um, I'm not a I'm going to go ahead and skip Europe just because I want to let 
some room for some other people to kind of diagnose the problems. Um, and we already kind of did look at Europe here. You can see we sectioned it out a little bit. It was hard to see on this map, um, a little bit easier to see when you zoom in. But uh, we accomplished a tremendous amount of information here. So I'm gonna upload all these in a moment. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd be glad to try to work with you no matter where you are on the planet. I see another friend of mine here online that just hopped on. And basically, it's super fun to try to see what we can do to help. So I'm just looking at the chat, seeing who's all online and stuff like that. Um, but um, go ahead and try to make some, make some ideas about how this is important. Every glass of water, I wanted to show you a quick little thing on video. The other day, someone put a uh, thing where they could, they put a piece of cloth from one thing to the next, and then they had another container here with a piece of cloth going to a second and a third, and then they boiled it. So you can actually filter your water uh, with cloth, right? So I don't know where you are on the planet. I have some friends, uh, South America, Africa, Southeast Asia, but that's a pretty interesting kind of water filter uh, that you can make <clears throat> um, just with simple kind of uh, thing so i pray for everybody that has clean water that we can keep working on helping out um people around the world as well as the wildlife uh this is a major project we just talked for almost exactly an hour so i hope this has been really helpful um, we've been live and recording and it is a little bit difficult to do this um, i recommend if you're going to get started go for it talk about it look at the whole entire planet you'll make some really interesting friends around the world it is scary sometimes People ask you for money or for help all the time, um, but do your best to try to help out and we'll have an awesome planet. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye.